Unconditional love is the best energy. Can help you to condition your body so that the chi can do it to work better. Everything we do is to help the chi to flow well in the body. It's just like you know whatever kind of uh, gasoline or types of gasoline you you need to you need to have, right? And then you the, the purpose is what to drive the car, and uh, so. And which which kinds of uh, gasoline will will do a, a better a better job? Then you can make a decision from there. So unconditional love can condition your body the best, so that the energy and the uh, the the chi can do its work the best. Welcome to the Mind Tracks podcast with breakthrough ideas to live your best life possible and how to make it happen. I am Paul Sheely, and today we will be talking with Chin Yi Lin. Chin Yi Lin is the founder of Spring Forest Qigong, a revolutionary form of an ancient art of energy healing. He's a Qigong grand master, powerful healer and teacher who has positively transformed the lives of millions of students worldwide. Chun Yi's Healing Center in Minnesota helps people overcome serious health challenges and return to optimal health and well-being. It was his own seemingly miraculous healing as a young man in his native China that led Chun Yi to his life's mission to create a healer in every home, in a world without pain and suffering. His inspiring life story is captured in his best-selling book, Born a Healer. Chunyi also authored the books, Head to Toe Healing and Head to Heart. And he's a creator of the Five Elements Self-Healing Course with us at Learning Strategies. Hello, Chen Yi. So good to have you here. Thank you for joining the podcast. Uh, yes. Hello. So, uh, Dr. Paul Shili. So, thank you so much for your invite. And this is my honor to be together with you. Well, before we talk about the unique nature of your work, it's still evolving, the Spring Forest Qigong. I'd like to introduce our listener to what Qigong is. What does that really mean and what is it? Uh -huh. Well, Qigong, this is an, an ancient practice in China. And it is uh, a practice uh, to help people to uh, balance the energy, to regain their health and or to achieve longevity. Okay, now you came to... Qigong out of a personal need. Can you describe a little bit about that story of how you found it and also why you decided to go so deep in the study of it? Uh -huh. Well, um, I grew up in China and I grew up in that environment and culture talking a lot about daily qi and how qi works in your body. And I believe that people know about Tai Chi, right? And people know about uh, some Chinese medicine talking about qi, how qi works in the body. So this is a how I the, the culture how I grew up, and I got so deep into the qigong practice because of my own health. At the time, I had arthritis in my knees, and I had a bone spot in my lower back and neck, and also, on the top of that, I had uh, suicidal depression. So I was looking for the cure to my sufferings. I tried so many different things when I was in China at that time as a college teacher. And I tried injection, acupuncture, and herbal medicine, and you just name it. And, but nothing really helped. So until one day, I heard about um, Qigong. Uh, I mean, a Qigong master. And this Qigong master 
came to the town and about like 10,000 people said, uh, were in his workshop. And the workshop was in a uh, you know, soccer field. Mm, so everybody was sitting on the dirt ground. So people said by listening to his workshop, you know, lis- listening to his uh, like talk and practice what he shared with us, and you could help yourself to cure your serious challenges. So I said, well, since I already tried everything, it doesn't matter to try one more thing. So I went seven hours and a half practice with him nonstop, no, no break time and no bathroom time. And then during the practice, miracle happened. At the end of the practice, all the swollen in my knees went away. And up to two months of practice and of the simple movements he taught us. And all the pain in my knees, the back and the neck all went away. And I had a, a health exam later on, all the bones would disappear. And interesting enough, this is the bonus to me. Up to practice another two more months, and all my suicidal depression went away. So from that moment on, I knew the power of Qigong. And then so I paid more attention to it. I put all my vacations into uh, deepening my study on Qigong. And up to at the time, so people said, well, you believe it, it works. You don't believe it. It doesn't work, and this is might be like a psychological thing, um, but to me, it is so real. And after I practice it, and I know more about it, and I want to um, share with the world the power of qi, the power of qigong, this uh, ancient practice, and the wisdom, and the the techniques. So that you, by using this simple movements and meditation together, you can help yourself to regain your health. If you don't have uh, health challenges, and you, know, you can help yourself to maintain your health and even help you to grow your spirituality. So you know, because of this, you know, I make more study deeper and deeper in this field. I totally devote my life into this field. And I discovered that everybody was born a healer. And everybody was born with these beautiful gifts. You can help yourself to heal and you can help others to heal too. So here I am. Uh, I developed a form of Qigong. It's called Spring Forest Qigong. Okay. Now in your book, Born a Healer, you do make that claim that we're all naturally born healers. A lot of people said, Oh, you're you're the one that's creating the miracles. And you said, Well, I am a healer, but you're a healer too. And your mission to help relieve the suffering of humanity is really also captured in this book. Why are you convinced that everyone has this natural healing capacity? And what do you recommend as a starting place for people to discover that they have it within them? Okay. Yeah, so absolutely. And because we were born, we all were born with, with the chi inside our body. So inside the body, we have like five components. One is our physical body. And then the second is the energy system. And then the third is the a chi system, and then the the, f- uh, the fourth one is our spirit, and then the last one, the fifth one is our soul. These five components of our uh, human being need to work together as one. And the key thing to work on to put all these five five components together is the chi, because the chi is the intelligence of the body. Let me make it simple in that way. The chi knows where the body needs the energy, where the body needs a balance, and in what time, and in what day, and that part of the body needs the balance. 
So in order to activate this qi, our ancestors discovered that through some very slow, simple movements and simple meditation, and you are able to help you to activate and strengthen the qi operation in your body so that you give uh, the support to the intelligence of the body to help you to regain your balance faster and, and more completely. And here I'm talking about faster. It's not like you take years. Well, some of the cases might take a, take a little bit longer time. But most of the cases, um, if you have arthritis, like what I did at that time, swollen in my knees and lower back, and, and et cetera. Now, let me give you an example. Just now, Paul, you, you in the raised up a very good question. Yes, you know, this might be the miracle happening in me, not happening in others. Well, Esther Trejo, one of the one of my students, and she had lung disease. Mayo Clinic wanted her to have a lung transplant, and she had been uh, in oxygen on oxygen for six and a half years before she came to my class to learn these techniques. Then so after she came to the came to the class, she practiced what I share with her. In the class, eight weeks, she went back to the Mayo Clinic. All her lung scar tissues through the exams is showed, disappeared. And before, the Mayo Clinic wanted her to have a lung transplant, right? And so yeah, then the doctor said, and uh, Esther Trejo, and, uh, you don't need oxygen anymore. Uh, so then she uh, she didn't need the oxygen at all after that in in her entire life. Well, and I know that Mayo Clinics were so impressed with what they witnessed with Esther and with other people you've worked with that they asked you to participate in a book on complementary medicine. Yes. And what yes. was what was the chapter that you co-wrote in that textbook yeah i co-wrote it uh, so with a doctor over there is, uh, on qigong and uh, this book is a, as a test book for the medical students and, uh, and also i did a study uh, uh, on arthritis you know with them and that study also was very successful too and up to that you know i did another study on bipolar uh, you know, uh, with some other scientists and uh, it was also very successful too. And so up to, you know, since 1992, I came to United States. I had already taught, you know, thousands of thousands of people all over the world. And right now in Spring Force Qigong System, we had over 400 certified teachers teaching Spring Force Qigong and plus, you know, many other practice groups around the world. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, thank and you. I remember hearing that you had no idea how many study groups were actually operating in the world until you reached out yeah. and discovered it. Well, yeah. you know, I've always seen images of people in the plazas in China doing their Tai Chi. Yeah. And is Qigong a little different kind of thing, or do they also practice Qigong when they're doing this these uh, exercises in their parks? Uh huh. So, and the Qigong, it is not regular exercise, and it's not regular workout exercise. You can take Qigong as a and uh, as a workout, but it's beyond that. Because the regular exercises focus on strengthening your muscle mm -hmm. and get the blood flow and help help uh, your heart your heartbeat right, but qigong goes deeper. It helps you to stimulate the intelligence of your body through much slower, gentle, and repeatable movements, and so that you can go deeper into your meditation. While you're doing those movements, connecting your mind, your head, your spirit together internally so that you are able to activate that chi to flow in the body. For instance, if we talk about chi, 
and uh, talking about healing. If you have a cold, and then at the same time you had uh, a, a paper cut, you know, finger, and then so you had the diarrhea, <laughs> the three things happening at the same time, right? How could the body figure it out? Different ingredients to help but this is three different, completely different things to heal simultaneously in the body. You know, so when you go to a doctor, you need to have a different prescription, right? But your body knows what kind of energy the body needs to help to cope with a cold and help to with the, uh, the paper cut and the diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So well, because of the chi, the chi is the intelligence. Now, if you can activate the intelligence, you can heal yourself much, much faster. I'm talking about days or even minutes. If, uh, if uh, for instance, if you bomb yourself on the, uh, uh, on the head and there's a uh, uh, congestion, uh, uh, soreness in the, in the head, well, you sore finger it, you clear it, you send chi into it. Within minutes, you can stop the pain, you can clear, even you can stop the bleeding within seconds. It is that quick I'm talking about. So of course, if I go for chronic illnesses, and that will take a longer time. You know, like Esther Trejo had been on, 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 on oxygen for six and a half years, 24 hours a day, and that would take in uh, four, eight weeks, or maybe a little longer time, right? Um, you know, it depends on what kind of uh, challenges people have. Yeah, I'm talking about fast and more completely. Well, what I, what I love about what you're saying is that it's not that any individual has to be intelligent to heal themselves. It's really more trust that this intelligent life force energy that's in us all can do that work. So it, the way you've described it to me, I've often referred, I like being out in nature and seeing little streams going in the woods. And if trees have fallen, there's blockage that is occurring in that stream. And there's too much water above that and too little water below it. And different energies if there's too much energy in certain areas of the body, that leads to certain kinds of illnesses or diseases. And if there's not enough energy, that leads to other kinds of diseases and illnesses. And the traditional Chinese medicine really understands that. What I love about your work is the first thing you do is you identify where the blockage is. Second, you remove the block or you you break up the blockage and then remove it and then allow that flow to occur now mm -hmm. is this is this something that anyone could do for themselves right now based on our dialogue right here oh yes um, let me let me let me give you a little bit more information on that for okay. instance and when we talk about everybody was born here everybody was born with this beautiful gifts, you can help yourself to heal and you can help others heal too. Now, for instance, if you have at this moment, the bleeding nose, you know, the blood comes out from left side of your nose, you put up your right hand above your head within seconds, 30 seconds, no more than one minute, the bleeding stops. If you have uh, blood comes out from the other side, now you know what to do, right? Just put up your hand above your head. Why so? Once you put, because the chi, this is how the chi flows. The chi flows from the chest, goes, to, goes through the hands, the fingers, and from the fingers, it goes to the head. And then from the head, it goes down to the feet. So this is the cycle. And then from the feet up to the chest again. And so if you put your hand or hand above your head, and then you're able to create a pressure to direct the chi flow back to its normal, its normal mode, so that once the channels open and the body heals, and you believe it, 
it works like that. You don't believe it, it still works like that. And that's it. We are all in our body having that meridians and the same meridians, the same channels in the body, no matter who you are. No matter you are <laughs> Chinese or Japanese or American, right? And、uh, we are all having the, the same, the same format, the patterns of life、uh, as energy flow in the body. So that's why we can do the the, the same thing to help you to、uh, increase the energy flow, so that you can help yourself to heal. Now, now talking about something you can do and right away and to benefit to benefit you. So, I will encourage you, each one of you, on、um, every day, spend like a ten minutes just holding your hands up above your head while you're walking, walking your dog, or the best if if you can have a ten minutes yourself, but just like uh, uh, doing this exercise. And you know what? By holding your hands up above your head, what you're going to help, and this will going to help. Now here, the spring here in Minnesota now, and lots of people have allergies, right? Seasonal allergies, and running nose, and uh, uh, itchy eyes. Putting your hands up above the head that will help you to cre- increase the energy flow to your lungs because all the allergies have something to do with the lungs. The lungs energy is weak. There's some blockages in the lungs. You need to unblock them so that the qi can flow, and、uh, the lungs energy shows out through the sinuses connecting to the eyes. That's why by putting your hands up above the head, you are able to help yourself to increase the qi flow to help you to balance to、uh, take care of the allergies. And then more about this. So people have a congestion in the breast, in the digestive system, in the shoulders, in the neck, in the neck pain, and the spinal issues. By putting your hands up, it can help you to increase the pressure to push the energy through, push the qi through to your entire body to help you to heal. So、that's, of course, I have another course、uh, called Five Elements Healing Movement. And if you want to know more about that, you know that's a、uh, that's a, the next thing you can go. But as a beginner, you can just start with this movement. That's gorgeous. And one of the things that impressed me about your work when I first met you is that you took a field of study with ten thousand movements. And you reduced it down to just a few simple movements that anyone、yeah. could do.、Yeah. And I love that type of thinking to synthesize what's absolutely essential. And recently, you evolved your work from the initial movements that you taught me to some different ones. Tell me how you've made the determination to go from. Ten, fifteen thousand, just down to these few. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would take a lot, a lot of the passion and compassion and time to、uh, to simplify that. Actually, does not is is and uh, and uh, distill it right and、uh, you know I I I the qigong has been existing in China for seven thousand years. And、wow. so through all this like、uh, register form in the in the world,、uh, there was this is old information about ten years ago. It's like fifteen thousand forms of qigong existing in the world. Now, of course, I did I did not study each one of them. I studied a lot of them. I I, I could I can tell you.、Huh? All the qigong forms. What I learned, especially about the past from those powerful masters, and based on their daily need, and at that time, the people say, uh, uh, and when they did qigong, they of course they wanted to help themselves to heal. And the first,、uh, the first written form of qigong was about four thousand five hundred years ago, from. The the emperor Da Yi at that time he had 
all the way to his in the knees and the back and lots of like, pain and he was not able to conduct the uh, the uh, ceremony to worship God, worship the sun and the moon and, and the earth. So he developed a set of dance, a slow dance. It's called Yi Steps. By doing this slow dance, conducting the ceremony, he found out his arthritis started going away and the pain went away. And then, of course, this, uh, this was uh, the first uh, written form of, of uh, uh, Qigong practice. At that time, people called this practice as called Dao Yin Su, it means a uh, Qi guided meditation and or breath. There's many different names. So then more scholars and more uh, sci- uh, uh, Chinese medicine doctors got involved with all the studies and they discovered more interesting things about these uh, slow, simple movements, uh, also coordinating with the breath, with the mind. And then they found out that this is not only can help to ease the pain, can also help to achieve longevity, and also can help to achieve like, uh, uh, spiritual growth. And so now, at that time, people work a lot. They had a lot of physical movements so that they had more um, Qigong movements focusing on unblocking the blockages. And because of the uh, lifestyle at the time, they, you know, uh, people work uh, in the ancient time. And nowadays, people sit a lot, not working uh, physically as much as what our ancestors did. And I discovered that people's uh, illnesses, especially chronic problems, mainly is from the middle dantian, which is the middle sections of the body. And so how to unblock the channels so that you can heal the body. And right now you see you know, all these like, heart issues, like cancers of different kinds and diabetes and everything is involved in the, the middle dantian, the middle section of the body. So I study a lot of these movements and I test it out and I see which one can help to open up the channels faster. I'm always <laughs> looking for and the studying and the testing and something simpler and better and more completely to help the body to heal. So that's why I can I develop into what we have now and the five elements. And this can help you by putting your physical movement, your mind and your emotions and your unconditional love all together to help yourself to heal the body, to balance the body faster well, this, and completely. This is a, a way that simplifies for anyone this huge body of work. Now, you referred to Dantian, and you know when people think about Eastern traditions, the joke was when I was growing up, yeah, you have to contemplate your navel. You know, uh-huh. and it was all about the Naval Center. And, yeah, yeah. and when I met you, you actually made a distinction between the lower Dantian, the middle Dantian, and the upper Dantian. Uh, yeah. But all of these are within the torso, right? Yeah. And um, could you just explain why it is so important that people are attending to this part, this this area behind the navel center in the heart. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, you know, um, so Paul, I really enjoyed the course you develop. Uh, it's called a photo reading. My son and I <laughs> went to uh, your course, your study, and so in your photo reading. You constantly ask people to focus on the lower dantian and or the navel and uh, to activate the energy. And so I 
I said, wow, so good. this is just so, so interesting. You know, how could this guy figure it out? <laughs> Something by focusing on the Nova Dante. Yeah, at the time, I didn't know you that much, of course. So um, that is, uh, I found uh, that was just so profoundly. And my son still benefit a lot from your course, and myself too. And I really enjoyed that. Thank you, you know, the Lower Dantian is the, um, is the center of vitality. Every bit of the energy you, your body needs to do any work, for instance, thinking, smiling, moving, and boy, talking about all kinds of energy, like electro electricity, and water, and heat, and vibrations. So they, all, they all got involved with the, this energy center and the vitality center, which is behind the navel. And it is deep inside, about th three, four inches behind the navel. And then the um, the second area is the middle dantian, which is the bottom of the height, I mean, in the bottom of the rib cage next to the bottom of the height. And so this area, this is so critically important because it connects to the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body together. It is the intersection of the yin and yang. The body, upper part of the body belongs to the yang and the lower part of the body belongs to the yin. This, this is something like that, you know, so people uh, get sick because of the yin and yang energy, do not talk to each other well. It is, you can imagine, just like and you have a, a husband and wife in, a, at home, if they don't talk to each other well, what is going to happen? <laughs> Lots of conflict is going to happen. So this is exactly what happened in our body. If the yin and yang cannot communicate well with each other, then um, problems is going to grow in the body. So we need to open up this one. So the middle dantian becomes critically important. Um, and plus the heart is the house of the spirit, right in the middle of the heart, you know, there is a, a, a center and that is the house of the spirit. And then so the upper dantian is the, uh, in, right in the middle of the brain. And, and I still get that the upper dantian is the house of the divine the house of the soul. So these three dantians need to connect together and so that you can be in whole. And uh, the, 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 the upper dantian helps you to connect with the divine energy. It has the, uh, the, the light blueprint of, uh, 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 of the body. So if, that's why we need to meditate. We need to uh, even we need to sleep, right, every day. Why we need to sleep? Uh, when we sleep, our body is quiet. And so they say uh, three parts can automatically join together as one to communicate, give them a time. And, and uh, if, if, um, if you don't have that sleep, you know, so, uh, and you know what is going to happen, right? It is just like, in, for instance, if the body, if you have a, a cell phone, if you have a cell phone, your cell phone is in a mess. You want to call Paul, but they, <laughs> and then uh, the, the person pick up and it was Tom. And you want to uh, and check your email, but you know, you're not able to tap into your email at all. So what is the simplest thing to do? Is to turn your phone off for five seconds, and then you turn it on again, right? So this is what, our body do when you meditate, when you give yourself that short period of time, the serenity, and you're able to help you to reset, just like as the cell phone, reset, you put yourself into the emptiness so that everything is back to normal based on the pattern of your system and the, which you're originally and set up uh, or program by the universe. So, um, but here in Qigong practice, you take advantage of the techniques of sleeping, the gifts of sleeping, and you can control it. And on purpose, you do it uh, 
getting yourself into the serenity with movement, with your thought, and then to, uh, um, with your breath, putting all these components together. And of course, you can help yourself to heal faster. And so this balancing of the yin and yang energies is through a series of meditations that I've experienced with you, the small universe, and you describe that moving the energy around down the front and up the back channels right. of the body is so important for anyone to do. Yeah. Um, so Qigong isn't just a physical exercise. It really is also a combination of harmonizing meditations. And there's several that I've experienced with you that are mind-blowing. The sun, the moon, the rainbow, all of these are have different purposes, but all of them are really helping to connect us into that intelligent energy. And the movements are helping to awaken and move that energy. Let me ask you, Chen Yi, when, when we're doing this work, in addition to the mental, which would be the meditation, the physical, which would be the movements, there are also a number of things that you talk about for an emotional life as well. And you always speak about love, forgiveness, and kindness. Could yeah. you say how these play into living a life of harmony, balance, and self-healing? Uh -huh. Everybody and says the most powerful healing energy is unconditional love. Mm. And I agree, I agree with that, right? And uh, that's so true. And now, then here comes to the question, how can you activate the unconditional love? The unconditional love, you need to activate it when your mind, when your heart is in peace. Uh -huh. So when your heart is in peace, then you are able to activate that energy to help you. And number, number two, the, uh, the unconditional love actually is the energy to condition your body the best comparing to any other types of energy I know. Unconditional love is the best energy, can help you to condition your body so that the chi can do its work better. Everything we do is to help the chi to flow well in the body. It's just like you know whatever kind of uh, gasoline or types of gasoline you you need to you need to have, right? And then you the, the purpose is what to drive the car. And uh, so, and which which kinds of uh, gasoline will, will do a, a better a better job? Then you can make a decision from there. So now here in the, so unconditional love can condition your body the best so that the energy and the, uh, the, the chi can do its work the best. Now, unconditional, unconditional love in action will be forget the best. At the time, I, when I remember I had, uh, I was meditating on the a dirt ground in a soccer field in China. Um, I heard the master said, you know, if you want to heal yourself faster and more completely, and the best is you forgive those people who once upon a time hurt you so badly and you still hold on with that story and then not letting go. And now you need to let go and forgive them and love them. And then you can heal yourself faster. And I said to myself right away, I said, no way. How could I forgive those people? When their life in danger, my parents, my family gave everything to support them. But when Cultural Revolution started, they were the first one for no reason to come to, uh, come up to my parents and even wanted to kill uh, their kids. So how could I forgive them? 
Well, I had all these stories in my book, Born a Healer, and I don't have time here to explain to you in detail my stories. So, of course, I, I could not. And uh, so then the master said, well, if you have a hard time to say, I forgive you, I love you, and you can pretend to forgive, to forgive them, pretend to love them. By pretending, you can also get the benefit. And I said, hmm, wait a minute. <laughs> By pretending, I can get myself healed completely with my arthritis and my knees and back. And uh, I think I can do that, you know. <laughs> so I, through my visualization, um, visualize, uh, I, I line them up in the sky. And then I said to them, one by one, hey guys, at this moment, I just wanted to heal myself completely. So I pretend, make sure you know that. I, I pretend I love you. I pretend I forgive you. And I, I repeat slowly, slowly, and then faster, faster, faster. And then at the end of the um, seven hours, and oh boy, and up the repeating that and so many times, thousands of times. And uh, power of the chi got activated from my lower dantian behind the navel, radiating out through my entire body. I went through all those spontaneous chi movements. And then at the end of the seven hours and a half, I picked myself up from the dirt ground. I was able to run again. All the pain and the swollen in my knees went away. I mean, the swollen went away, the pain, 80% gone. And uh, so, and that is the power of like, forgiveness. You, well, later on I found out, you know, when you, when you forgive others, you actually you let go with the stories. You let go with the emotions. So we're talking about the emotions. And the sign, uh, Chinese medicine doctors already discovered this and Qigong masters too. And anger could make damage to the liver Hate, hatred can make damage to the heart and uh, overthinking, worries, anxiety could make damage to the spleen, to the pancreas, to the stomach. And the uh, grief, uh, sadness, depression and it can make damage to the lungs, to the chest and to the breathing system, large intestines. And then the fears can make damage to the, and uh, to the to the vital uh, vitality system, and like which includes uh, the reproductive organs, the bones, the bone density, bone marrow, anus, and brain, and the spine, and so all these areas. So that looks like a bad news, right? And in our life, we have a lot of like uh, these things going on in our life, and then now, so we our ancestors also discover another set of emotions can help to cancel out the blockages and these negative emotions produce and got caught in our body. And now, for instance, happiness can help to heal the liver system, including the tendons, the joints, the uh, gallbladder and the eyes. Mm. Love, I mean, love uh, or uh, joy can help to heal the physical heart, small intestines, and blood, and the brain part of it. And then uh, peace, serenity, can help to heal the spleen, the pancreas, and uh, the stomach, uh, the muscle, the muscle pain, and that kind of things. And then so uh, in contentment can help to balance the blockages created by sadness, by grief, and to clear blockages in the lungs, heal the lungs. Um, like asthma, uh, like a COVID, and uh, that kind of things, it created uh, the congestion in the lungs, in the large intestines, and etc. And then um, about the uh, fears. Now, the opposite of it is gratitude. When you hold gratitude in your heart, feel it in your body, can help to strengthen your bone marrow, 
strengthen the reproductive organs, get the blockages open in the spine, in the brain. So because of this power uh, of these like, uh, five different kinds of emotions, I call it the five elements, and it can help the body to heal from another perspective, from the emotional perspective in the body. So I put it into my Qigong form, the new, uh, the, uh, the new five elements. Mm. So while you're doing the movement and you listen to the guidance and activate happiness, joy, peace, contentment, and uh, uh, gratitude, and that can help you heal the body even faster. That's so gorgeous to actually do these exercises. Um, throughout the pandemic, we would do a YouTube video every day, a live session of doing your exercises. And it was amazing how many people were doing it with us and the effect that it had. And, you know, Libby, my wife, and she's, has known your family forever as well. Um, she started joining me in those daily exercises. And she always appreciated Qigong, but she never really practiced. She started doing it instantly. She really felt the energy moving in her. And she decided to practice it along with me, but she didn't want to get on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, within two or three days, she was on the camera with me going through it. And it was so amazing. She will not go a day without her Qigong, even if she does just 10 minutes of it, and as opposed to a half hour of it. Yeah. Just it, it, she absolutely wants to feel the groundedness of all of those emotions. And it's absolutely changed your life. So I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you so much for your life of work, for your dedication, um, and for sharing your faith and your confidence in all of us as healers that we might find our own path to healing. It's, um, it's beautiful work that you do. It's been my honor to be a part of it for so many years now. Do you have one? final message that you would like to share as encouragement to our listener? Uh -huh. Well, the most uh, powerful energy for healing is unconditional love. Put the unconditional love in action and together helping you to activate the chi. And so when you do those movements, always remember, put a smile on your face. Smile stands for S-M-I-L-E start my internal love engine. When you start that love engine within you, everything becomes easy. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. I'm smiling right now. <laughs> Thank you, Thanks, Jin Yu. Peace and blessings. Yeah. Same to you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Chinyi Lin. You can learn more about Chinyi at springforestqigong.com. That's S-P-R-I-N-G-F-O-R-E-S-T-Q-I-G-O-N-G.com. And now in the second part of the podcast, it's just you and me. I'll tell you how to use the Paraliminal Sessions in the MindTracks app to easily handle obstacles and move toward the success you want, especially as it relates to our discussion with Chen Ye. If you're new to the relaxing Paraliminal audio sessions, they use breakthrough technologies to activate your whole mind in only 20 minutes to help improve any area of your life. Let's get going. Welcome to the follow-up to my conversation with Master Chin Yi Lin, where we talked about the power of self-healing. 
in my years of knowing Chen Yi, the way I describe him to people is that this guy is the real deal. <laughs> he sees energy. He, when I meet him, <laughs> instead of saying, hi, Chen Yi, how are you? I say, hi, Chen Yi, you're fine. How am I? <laughs> he, he can read what's going on inside of the energy field of anyone he meets and actually be quite prescriptive about what they might do to help shift the energy and bring about self-healing. Remarkable human being. And I just loved having the opportunity to be with him again and to talk about his amazing work in Spring Forest Qigong. Now, in terms of using paraliminal technology to make progress in your own life and some of the key topics that he and I spoke about, I focus on four different areas. One is the idea of being born a healer. Uh, the second is healing yourself. Third is practice. And the fourth is unconditional love, which is how we were finishing our dialogue together. And the idea of you are born a healer, he, he says something pretty cool. He said, whether you believe it or whether you don't believe it, it's still true. <laughs> it works if you believe it, it works if you don't believe it. But if you did act on the belief that you are a healer, you're born a healer and can actually direct healing energy to assist another, then you would engage in the world in a really different way. And I raised my children knowing that they had that capacity. So uh, when my youngest son was going to high school, he noticed somebody wincing as they're at their locker and he'd walk over to them. Would you like me to help you with that problem? Sure. He'd do a little Qigong energy work on him and said, how's that feel? feels a lot better. So it's just a natural thing that we all have the capacity to do. Chen Yi and I created a paraliminal together called Faith and Confidence, which means that you can have faith in the intelligent energy of Qi, this universal energy that's in all of us, and you can have the confidence to direct it for the purposes that you have to relieve yourself of some kind of suffering or to assist others in the same way. Listen to that one. You'll also get a lot more of his energy. He does something quite profound at the end of that paraliminal where he actually sounds out the Heart Sutra. And it's a, a beautiful vibrational energy that helps tremendously. The second area that we talked about is this idea of healing yourself. And the five element healing paraliminal that I put together actually guides you through the five organ systems that Chen Yi spoke about, the liver, the heart, the stomach pancreas, the lung system, and the kidneys. And with each of these organ systems, there's a color and there is an emotion. So for the liver, that's happiness. The heart, that's joy or passion. For the stomach pancreas, that's peace or groundedness. For the lungs, that's contentment. For the kidneys, that's gratefulness or gratitude. And as you... If you have any disturbance in any of these organ systems, it will tend to show up as symptoms, illnesses, diseases. So as you get the energy flowing, that intelligent energy can actually do the work to heal you. Powerful experience. The paraliminal that I did years before even knowing Chen Yi was called Perfect Health. That's based on the work of a Dr. Paul Pearsall who wrote super immunity. So it's a way of bringing your immune system online in a positive way. And it uses a special technique of disassociation and uh, seeing yourself in front of you and working on yourself. And that allows you to get out of the symptom that you may be dealing with and work on it 
from a perspective of wellness. It's, it's a very cool process. The third area is the idea of practice. Now, I mentioned how my wife started practicing Qigong, Spring Forest Qigong, every single day. I have the same discipline with my yoga and meditation. I mean, it's just I just don't want to miss a day. I'll do almost anything to arrange my day to make sure that I get in those times. And self-discipline really helps get that going for us. The term discipline comes from the word disciple, meaning follower of. So if you have a strong motive and you follow your intention toward the realization of what it is you're motivated to realize, creating discipline is a natural, easy thing to do. Attention, interest, desire, action. And what you'll discover is that if you give it your intention, then you're going to find within you whatever is necessary to bring your attention to it, to develop an interest in it, to, to actually truly desire that practice for yourself. And then taking action on what it is you desire is pretty easy. So self-discipline is a great paraliminal to help you do a practice that's going to be a benefit to you. The second paraliminal I recommend is focus and concentration, which I did with Brian Tracy, is we need to sometimes just really focus our energy. Like he, Chen Yi talked about focusing the energy on your lower Dantian, Dantian or on your heart to feel that opening of self-love, compassion, compassion for yourself and others, love, forgiveness, and kindness. And so that the idea of being able to bring a focus level of attention means that the mind becomes a power in and of itself. A single thought becomes a power. What you When you can get your mind focused to a single point, it's much easier to penetrate what it is you're trying to get through, break through, than if you bring all kinds of different approaches to something. Once you find something that will make a difference, focus your attention and interest on that. The fourth area is the idea of unconditional love. It's an interesting concept, right? But to practice unconditional positive self-regard and unconditional positive regard from uh, for others might mean that you're able to really forgive yourself or forgive others to bring that sense of unconditionality to it. And the powerful practice of self-love is found in the paraliminal by that title. I've referred to it on a number of the podcasts because I, I really do think it's a great way to be in touch with yourself. And once you have that unconditionality within yourself, you can do what Chen Yi said, which is pretend to unconditionally love another, or pretend to forgive them so that that unconditional positive regard can flow from you. When you're able to love yourself, it's much easier to let that love energy flow in the direction of others. Finally, gratitude. Now, Chen Yi referred to that, and I talked about earlier as the energy of the kidneys, right? Gratefulness, appreciation, gratitude, thankfulness. But that is really a tremendous starting point for all of this chi energy that Chen Yi really referred to, that's the place that real that's the that's the place that really gets the chi moving. And what he said at the beginning of our dialogue is Qi Gong is essentially designed to motivate that energy. And uh, gratitude as a paraliminal can really help. The other thing he said is, hey, stand up, hold your hands over your head, 10 minutes a day. Doesn't really sound like much, does it? 
try it. <laughs> it might be really hard for you at first. For me to hold my hands up for four minutes is a lot first few times I tried it. So play with it. It's going to motivate and start moving that chi energy so that you can enjoy self-healing and begin directing that energy to relieve the suffering of those that you care for as well. So good to be with you. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me today. I applaud your willingness to maximize your potential. You can easily use the Paraliminal Audio Sessions and Mind Tracks app to stimulate your non-conscious mind, that is, your inner mind, to reduce any resistance in your life and to propel you toward the success you want. Go to www.mindtracks.com forward slash G-O. That's www.mindtrx dot com slash g o these amazing audio tools have helped millions and i encourage you to use them in your world today be sure to be back for more episodes of the mind tracks podcast you'll find insightful conversations with authors experts and thought leaders all devoted to improving your life's experience thank you again for being here on our Mind Tracks podcast.